the easiest way to diagnose brainstem stroke syndromes in under a minute in your exams okay so for this you have to apply three simple steps so the first step involves first is you have to diagnose that it is in the brainstem how will you know if it's in the brainstem there will be contralateral or crossed findings that is contralateral body will be involved and ipsilateral face will be involved that is if there is par uh, paralysis or paresthesia that can be on one side of the body and the cranial nerve involvement that is it can be ptosis or facial nerve weakness will be in the opposite side of the body so this is so next you come to second question first you, you know it's in the brainstem next you come to the second question that is where in the brainstem it is occurring <clears throat> that is whether it's in the midbrain or in the pons or in the medulla okay and also you have to diagnose whether it is occurring medially or laterally how do you do this first for this you have to see the cranial nerves so the second step involves seeing the cranial nerves so if the third or the fourth cranial nerve involves then it is in the midbrain similarly if the fifth or eighth cranial fifth to eighth cranial nerve is involved it is in the pons similarly 9 to 12 cranial nerves is in the medulla so this you use the rule of fourth that is midbrain till fourth nerve then in the pons there is 5 to 8 nerves that is another 4 cranial nerves are coming there and medulla is 9 to 12 nerves that is another 4 cranial nerves are coming in the medulla. Similarly now to diagnose now you, you have diagnosed whether it is in the midbrain or pons or medulla. Now you have to see whether it is occurring medially or laterally. Okay so for that you remember medial structures come with 4 M's okay 4 M's. So what are these 4 M's? First is the motor tract. Second is the medial lemniscus, which is nothing but the sensory tract. Remember, lemniscus is a sensory tract which carries touch, vibration and proprioception. And third M is the medial longitudinal fasciculus, which is carries innervation to the eyes. And then fourth one is the motor component of any cranial nerve. It might be any of the cranial nerves that I mentioned. Now coming to the lateral, lateral is also called as side, right, S. So remember, lateral structures all have four S's. Now first is S is spinothalamic tract that is carrying the uh, pain sensation in the opposite side. Second is the spinocerebellar tract. Third is the sympathetic tract S and fourth is the sensation of the face which is the fifth cranial nerve. Okay. So this is one thing you have to learn. Okay. If you learn this then you can answer any question on the brainstem syndrome. Learn the Now let us come to examples. Okay. Now uh, think in the question you have a question uh, with the patient having stroke now you have to diagnose what sort of stroke it is first see if there is crossed finding that is one side face is involved opposite side body is involved so that becomes crossed finding that is brainstem involvement second is see which cranial nerve is involved okay so this question you imagine patient has 12th cranial nerve involved that is what is happening one half of the tongue is atrophied okay that Obviously, we know hypoglossal nerve that is supplying to the tongue. So, 12th nerve is involved. So, where will you localize 12th nerve to? You will localize it to medulla. So, first you know it is in the brainstem. Second is you saw the cranial nerve that is 12th nerve involvement. Then you localize it to the medulla. Now, third step is you have to identify whether it is in the medial medulla or the lateral medulla. So, see which are the structures involved, whether it is 4M or 4S. <clears throat> so, here you see there is paralysis and impaired sensation of the fine touch. So, which is this structure? The structure involved here is medial lemnus. Means what? It is medial involvement. So, that is medial medullary syndrome. Simple. So, this question comes, you can answer it. So, this is medial medullary syndrome and the artery involved is called as anterior spinal artery. Now, how will you make out what is the mnemonic for this? Remember the word mass that is in medial medullary syndrome, anterior spinal artery is involved. Okay, so that is the mnemonic for this medial medullary syndrome artery. Now, next in your question, you will see if there is crossed finding. You see whether which is a cranial nerve involved. If there is dysphagia, dysarthria, that means 9th and 10th cranial nerve is involved, then you know it is medulla. Third is you have to figure out whether it is medial side or lateral side. So in lateral side, which are the tracks that were coming? Lateral was side S. So it is spinothalamic tract which carries the opposite side pain and temperature. So what happens? Contralateral hemianesthesia happens. Okay. So just by seeing this one word, you know that it is lateral medullary syndrome. Next is other things are there. That is spinocerebellar tract is there. So it can cause ataxia, ipsilateral. Sympathetic tract is there. So it can cause ipsilateral honors. And also sensation from the face is carried. Okay, so, so ipsilateral facial sensory loss. That is lateral medullary or Wallenberg syndrome. Now how will you remember which is the artery for that? Remember pica is there 
in this. Pica means eating disorder. So remember, here also there is eating problem. So pica is uh, lateral medullary syndrome or Wallenberg syndrome. Okay. Next, coming to the Pontine syndrome. Same thing. First, check for if there is any crossed involvement. If there is crossed involvement, then it is brainstem. Then you check which cranial nerve is involved. For example, if the patient has diplopia, it is sixth nerve. That means it is pons. Similarly, if patient has facial weakness, that means it is seventh nerve. Again, comes to pons. If patient has vertigo or tinnitus, again it is eighth nerve. Come to pons. Okay. So the in the important syndrome that you have to remember with respect to uh, pons is Millard Gubler syndrome. Okay. You remember how will you remember this? Remember the mnemonic mill near a pond. Okay. So what happens here? You know it is pons. So sixth or seventh cranial nerve will be involved. Which side it will be involved? It will be involved in the same side because cranial nerve happens in the same side. Okay. And hemiplegia will happen on the which side? Uh, which side? That will happen on the opposite side. So this. Now next you come to the midbrain syndrome. Okay. Midbrain syndrome, obviously we know the nerve involved is going to be third or fourth nerve. So, uh, third nerve uh, disease going to present, it's going to be ptosis, midriasis, down and outer because of lateral rectus overactivity. Okay. So first syndrome, you have to, three important syndromes you have to remember in midbrain. First syndrome is Weber, which is medial midbrain involvement. So for this easiest mnemonic is, so you know midbrain involvement, if there is going to be ipsilateral third nerve palsy, contralateral hemiplegia, okay, because of motor involvement. What is the easiest way to remember this? Remember a spider web, web for Weber, okay, spider web is coming to your right eye. So what are you going to do? You are going to close the right eye, right, because a web came and what are you going to do? You are going to hit it with your right hand. What does this mean? First is the eyes is closed, that is third now palsy is there. Second is you are hitting with the right eye, that means what is happening? Left hand is not working. So that is an indirect way of telling there is contralateral hemiplegia, okay. Second one is clots. You finish Weber's. Second is clots. So in clots, what you're going to see, you're going to use the mnemonic. Clot took taxi. Okay. Clot took taxi. So uh, what is the taxi? T stands for tremors. AXI stands for ataxia. Okay. So this is what you're going to see in clot syndrome. And of course, you're going to see that tremors is going to be tremors and ataxia is going to be contralateral side. And it's going to be because of involvement of red nucleus. The third is perinod syndrome that is in midbrain. Remaining, remember there are four P's. Okay, first is it is seen in pineal oma. It is problem in up looking. Okay, so problem occurs in up looking because of pineal oma. So there are four P's in perinod syndrome. Okay, keep looking for these P's in your MCQ. Next is basilar artery syndrome that is locked in syndrome. This happens when pons, midla, uh, midbrain and medulla all three are involved. The corticospinal tract is involved so patient is going to be completely paralyzed but cortex is working so patient is going to be awake. Okay, It is because of involvement of basilar artery. So this covers the important brainstem syndromes.